military cravats or military triangular bandages are very different than their inexpensive civilian counterpart. These are about six bucks and they're much more stout material. These are about 79 cents a piece. The military cravats come out of the plastic wrap and they have two safety pins in them that can be used for a lot of different things. We're going to use the casualties medical kit anytime we can. If we can't find it or they don't have one, we're going to have to use our own medical supplies. A tourniquet was placed because this casualty has a partial amputation and an ongoing operation, which means even though we've pulled back around a corner in an inner perimeter with assaulters with guns, it's still some degree of a dangerous area. We need to secure the floppy hand. Well, you know you always wanted a piercing, and this, although it looks like a very fringe technique, is actually very interesting. This is from a wilderness medical textbook. If we think about the fact that most airway obstruction occurs from the tongue, that's usually what causes snoring, if we could get that tongue mass off the back of your hypopharynx, we would relieve your airway obstruction. One technique is to roll the casualty on their side. Again, that's what your spouse is told to do when you snore. The oral pharyngeal airways, the nasal pharyngeal airways, all of those airways do basically just that. Unless you're a dedicated medical professional rescuing casualties though, I'm not necessarily convinced you're gonna have nasal pharyngeal airways or some of these other widgets. So here is a very simple, although somewhat backwoods witch doctor way to deal with that. When I first saw this photo in a wilderness medical textbook, I showed one of my friends who was a former Special Forces medic. He was also a Vietnam veteran and he looked at the photo and he said, oh yeah, I used to do that two or three times a day in the rice paddy. And I said, really? I've never seen this before. And he goes, yeah, we didn't have any of those plastic tubes like we use now. He goes, this is basically as good as it got. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, you ever notice that the military cravats come with two safety pins? He goes, I used to use them for this all the time. It's a pretty simple technique. Grab their tongue, uh, yard it out of their mouth, uh, and the safety pin the sides it. There's another technique where they put one safety pin right into your tongue and they actually tie it to your shirt. Looks kind of hokey, but apparently it does work. Now, if you can have dedicated equipment made to do this, that's probably superior. At this point, we've placed the cut down endotracheal tube through the casualty surgical airway or their cricothyroid membrane. He or she is now breathing through it. Our second to the last step is to fill the pilot balloon or inflate the cuff. Our final step is to secure this tube in place. One technique that is used by medics in the Ranger Regiment is to use these large military um, safety pins that come out of the military cravats as a securing device. And you go through the skin and the cut down endotracheal tube and just safety pin the whole thing in place, and that's fairly robust. I think you're still better off using ties to secure this in place, but sometimes you have to co-op the equipment at hand to do the job, and this is one technique that has been used in combat.